Hey there, so I'm going to install Splunk and the Splunk Forwarder um, on an EC2 instance. I'm going to do a quick recording of this. Um, have some notes, so I'll just kind of follow along. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is create the EC2 instance. Uh, I already created one. I'm going to create a brand new one uh, for this video. I'm going to name it Splunk, leave all the defaults. The only thing I'm going to do is add a key pair. You can create a brand new key pair if you want. Uh, it's a simple RSA PM. Um, let's see here. Yep, and then leave everything here. This is actually pretty small. Uh, probably should set this to um, something more like 10 or 15 or even 20 um, but for this I'm just going to leave it at 8 and then kind of deal with it just for the demo purposes uh, and then you just launch instance okay this is the new instance that I have it's pending it'll start um, let me go ahead open up a terminal um, this is Windows, so I have a WLS setup with a Kali Bash. Um, I might make a tutorial for something like that later, but either way, this is what I have and I set this up. Um, what I think I want to do is show you here, I have the uh, PEM file. Um, the the thing is that um, I, I actually downloaded this file, want to actually grab this file, and I want to show you that if you go to um, WSL and then dollar sign, this will actually bring you to the um, uh, bash shell home um, for WSL. Um, and here, I'm going to delete this. Uh, I'm going to put just that PEM file. And I wanted to show you that if you, um, you can see here now that when it downloads, it has uh, too much permissions. If you uh, SSH to, and use this file, um, to user at and then you uh, let's see here go to this address you'll get this kind of message here saying that it, it, it's the permissions are too open so um, to fix this you'll actually have to do uh, a, a change mod 400 uh, on that file and if you take a look you'll now see that it's reduced the uh, permissions of that and then you should be able to SSH um, similarly using that file but you won't get the error then um, so let's see starting to go back to where I was before um, want to probably perform afterwards um, an update Yes, on this. And then while it's doing that, here, um, go log into Splunk, go to your dashboard, and you'll see the uh, Spl Splunk Enterprise and the Splunk Universal Forwarder. You're going to need both of these links. Um, let me just open that and open this. Here, this is for the uh, enterprise server. Let's go to Linux. Um, we're going to need the RPM. Hit the download now button. It'll prompt you to download, cancel, go to the command line here. Select all of the, um, uh, the command for the wget back to your 
here, go back to your terminal. Um, you will probably have to so you make sure I'm in the right directory of the EC2 user home directory. I'm going to get this file using the command line. And then I'm going to perform an install. Uh, you can see that here's the file. Um, install, sudo yum install, splunk, and then the RPM package. So perform the install using that package. Yes. Okay. And then from here, um, I'm going to have to start the service. Um, so sudo bash get into root uh, cd into the opt directory. You can see that there is now a new Splunk folder. Uh, cd into that, and then you can see what's in the Splunk folder there cd into the bin folder we're going to execute the splunk start and if you just do splunk start you'll see that you have this annoying kind of a license agreement um, cancel out of that uh, you can actually do a start using um, an accept license and then you can answer answer yes for everything. Uh, this will skip that and then go right into um, setting up the admin username and password here. If you hit enter, it'll just set it as default admin. Uh, set a password and let the uh, server start. Okay, the server is going to start on port 8000. You're going to have to go back to EC2, um, open up a firewall rule, go to security groups, edit inbound rules, add um, an 8000 8, port uh, for just anywhere, save the rules. Go back. Uh, it should have started now, so you can open up a browser window so here let's go back to that instance and grab that port uh, IP address and on port 8000 can log into Splunk using that same password that admin and password that you set okay never um, you'll see a message right up here where it's saying the uh, minimum free disk space. Uh, this will actually keep Splunk from working correctly. So what you need to do is go to settings, uh, server settings, general settings, and then change this to 50. Um, just show you that again, it's the pause index. Um, the free disk space setting. Okay. Um, and then let's shift over to the forwarder. So we have our server, servers running. Um, go back to the terminal. Um, there was this forwarder web page you need to go to the Linux 64-bit um, and then the RPM hit download now again you want to cancel when um, it's asking for the download prompt there um, take this 
copy this, go back to your terminal and let's exit out of root. Uh, now you're back in your user home, uh, get the file. You can see now we have the two different install files. Um, let's do a sudo install yum install and splunk forwarder. Yes to this. Okay, now you want to go uh, back into the root. And then we want to CD to um, this Splunk forwarder. It's a new folder. And then the bin directory. Okay, and then from there, we want to also again do that Splunk start and, and then accept license. Yes. Uh, again, if you hit enter, just take the default, set a password. Um, we are already using the port 8090 for the server. So let's go ahead for the forwarder, set this to 9089. Or, uh, yes, and then 9089. Okay, now we want to forward um, to a port on the server. So we're going to use the same Splunk uh, add forward server. And then we want to use that same IP address and set it to go to port 9997. you for um, username and password that is what I have there and then I will need to do a restart And you'll need to go to your instance and open up another port. This one will be for that 9997 port. Save this rule. Okay, restart should be finishing here. Now you will have to go and set a monitor. Okay, added a monitor. And actually, this is probably where you want to do a restart.
Okay. Um, now we want to switch over to the server. And we want to uh, perform the uh, enable to listen. Uh, listen on 997. Nine, and then from here, uh, do a restart of the server. Um, and this is also um, definitely why you would need to have that port open. So the server um, can get the inbound communication from the forwarder. Let's see, uh, we can wait here until the uh, Splunk server restarts. Start it again, log in. I go to the home, go to search and expand reporting. Now let's get, skip that, go to data summary here. And we should see hosts update. This is the forwarder right here. If you click on that, you can see that we have a bunch of data here. Um, that is coming from the var logs directory. Okay, I think that's it. Peace out.